day class. Welcome back to Teach and Learn channel. Today, we will be discussing another lesson and that is all about perpetration of life. For today's lesson, learning competency is to understand the different mechanisms of sexual and the sexual reproduction. From the previous lesson, we discussed that one of the unifying themes of life is the ability to reproduce. All living things reproduce from a simple microorganisms into a eukaryotic plants and a eukaryotic human. While as humans have goals in life, some animals were born to reproduce and die immediately after. So now you ask, why is reproducing offspring so important to animals? This is one of qu a question that we will be answering into later. In this lesson, we will understand key concepts about the complexities of reproduction in animals and synthesize our learning at the end. Lastly, in this lesson, we will also allow you to appreciate the true importance of why a continuity of species is important. Now, what is reproduction? Reproduction is said to be the ability of an organism to produce offspring or duplicate itself. It is one of the unifying themes of life that is shared by all organisms from simple to complex organisms. There are different types of reproduction. We have a sexual reproduction and sexual reproduction. Today, we will be exploring as to how sexual reproduction different from a sexual reproduction. Let's start with a sexual reproduction. Sexual reproduction meaning only one parent cell is needed to produce an offspring. Simple organisms are produced through a sexual reproduction. Offspring come from a single parent and has the exact copy of the genes, hence referred as a clone. In a sexual reproduction, a parent organism will not need a mate or partner for it to reproduce or to produce its own offspring. The offspring of a sexual organism are an exact same copy of its parent organisms. So from this diagram, we have the parent cell. Now the parent cell divide, the nucleus divided, and so with the cytoplasm to produce a two daughter cells. There are different types of asexual reproduction. First one is binary fission. Binary fission occurs in a single celled organism. It is when a parent cell divides into equal parts or create an offspring. This type of reproduction is like cloning, as shown in the figure. To easily remember and understand the reproduction process of binary fission, it is valuable to remember what the term means. The word binary means having two parts, the new daughter bacteria, while the word fission means the movement of splitting, the dividing of two equal parts. Look at the video. It is an example of a binary fission from which the microorganisms divide into two equal parts and so the produced offspring are the exact copy of the parent organism. Another type of asexual reproduction is the fragmentation. Fragmentation occurs when an organism breaks apart of itself into a fragment and the fragment develops into a new organism. To better understand it, think of a starfish. A starfish can have one of its legs cut off and it will grow back. What's more uncommon is that the leg that was cut off will grow into a new starfish. These organisms are capable for regeneration while the fragment starts to grow into a new starfish. The body of the fragment starts to grow back the missing part of li or limbs. The third type is budding. Budding happens when a parent organism grows a bud attached to its body. When the bud is developed, it will detach itself from the parent and form a new organism. The bud breaks away to live on its own. Example of organisms that are using budding as a mode of asexual reproduction is a single-celled yeast and the multicellular eukaryotes such as hydra and corals. As you have seen from the diagram, we have here the hydra. The tiny bumps appear on the parent hydra and the parent hydra develops the buds. 
the bud grows and then the bud breaks up to become independent hydra. In this example, this hydra will grow independently and will make a new organism. Last type of asexual reproduction is the parthenogenesis. Parthenogenesis is a sexual mode of reproduction in which an unfertilized egg develops into a new individual occurring commonly among insects and certain other arthropods. These are found in females where growth and development of embryos occurs without fertilization by a male. Others might say this as a virgin birth because literally the female were fertilized without the help of a female. To help you further understand it, think of a bee. The male drones are produced through parthenogenesis, while the workers and queens are female produced from the fertilized egg. Look at the example. We have the queen bee and the male bee. Once the egg were fertilized by the male bee, the product or the offspring produced are the worker or a queen bee. While this queen bee could also produce an offspring without fertilization or no fertilization occurs. And that is by the process of parthenogenesis, wherein the offspring will be called as the drone. Take note, the male drones are produced through parthenogenesis, so meaning these drones are the male, while the worker and the queen are both female produced in the fertilization. Let's now move with the sexual reproduction. In sexual reproduction, a male and female gamete is needed to produce an offspring. Gametes are terms used to denote egg cell and sperm cell. In most instances, there is a male and female organisms to produce the gametes. Sexual reproduction is the perpetuation of new organisms from two organisms with the use of gametes. In this process, male gametes, which is the sperm cell, and female gametes, which is the egg cells, form a diapered cell called zygote containing two sets of the chromosome. During sexual reproduction, the genetic material contained in their chromosomes combined to produce genetically diverse offspring that is different from both parents. Another important thing to remember about sexual reproduction is that this type of process involves the union of gametes or sex cells in a process called fertilization. Hundreds of millions of sperm cells are on the race to fertilize the one egg cell and only one sperm cell will be declared as a winner. When two organisms of the same kind mate and reproduce, each parent contributes genetic material to their offspring. After the union of male and female gametes, the zygote will be formed and that contains genetic materials inherited from both of the parents and has a total of 46 chromosomes, 23 from the mother cell and 23 from the father cell or the sperm cell. Other organisms that are used to, using asexual reproduction other than humans are jellyfish, sea urchins, fishes, snake and other reptiles, insects, aves or birds, and mammals. Organisms are diverse, unique, and have equally unique features that help them survive in their environment. These features tailor to the animal's environment, size, habitat, and so many more factors. One unique feature is the way these organisms undergo fertilization. There are two types of fertilization, external fertilization and internal fertilization. Let's go with external fertilization. External fertilization occurs when the fusion of gametes is outside the female body. The female lay eggs in the water and the male sheds sperm. Think of a jellyfish, sea urchins, clams, fish, and frogs. They do not intercourse, but they reproduce sexually and through external fertilization. The other type of fertilization is internal fertilization. 
it is the fusion of egg cell and sperm cell that, that is inside the female body. While internal fertilization is the opposite, it is where the eggs are fertilized inside the body of the female. Sperm are released inside the female's body, and there are types of internal fertilization, the oviparity and the viviparity. Let's try to discuss this too. Oviparous animals lay their eggs with little or no other embryonic development within the mother. Example is the chicken. The young will get nourishment from its yolk and will be protected by the external covering of the egg. Oviparous are common in birds and in reptiles such as snakes. The other one is the viviparity. Viviparity is common in almost all of mammals like humans. The offspring develops within the female and is nourished by the mother's blood in the placenta, like what happened in human. So we are said to be viviparous animals and viviparity is common in almost of all mammals, such as cow, giraffe, cat, donkey, dog, monkey, and many more. To ensure species continuity, nature allows for both sexual and the sexual reproduction in the animal kingdom. The success of animal reproduction does not only end when an egg is fertilized, it ends when the offspring can fully grow and eventually reproduce as well. As mentioned before, reproduction is a key to survival. We will all eventually die and we need to make sure that our species continue through reproduction.